Dear viewers, welcome again. Today, our topic will be a little bit different because today we are going to discuss a famous poem written by William Wordsworth. It is probably the best known poem of William Wordsworth. Yes, uh, we are talking about I wandered lonely as a cloud. This poem has four stanchions. Okay, now stanchion one, two, three, and four. Okay, every stanchion contains six lines. Okay, now, dear viewers, uh, you can see the image of the paper on which William Wordsworth himself wrote the poem in 1802. This is the picture of William Wordsworth. He was predominantly an English Romantic poet. He was born in 1770 in the United Kingdom and died in 1850. Let us come to the point. Actually, the poem has a background. Once, in 1802, while Wordsworth was taking a walk with his sister Dorothy on a long belt of daffodils, uh, his sister inspired him to write a poem. And the result of that was this poem. Okay, now, uh, let us go to every stanza and uh, we will try to understand every lines in detail. Stanza number one. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Besides the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. This is the first stanza of the uh, poem. In the first stanza, at the very beginning of the poem, uh, who are the poets say? Actually, the poet uh, says that I wandered lonely as a cloud. He uh, uh, compares himself as a cloud and he says uh, he was wandering lonely as a cloud. Where? Over hills and hills. Wherever he was wandering lonely, alone just like a cloud on hills and hills at the time uh, at the time he saw a crowd actually this crowd is not uh, the crowd of the gathering of people this crowd means he says a host of golden daffodils that means he saw a lot of golden daffodil flowers the color of the daffodil flowers were golden so he used the phrase a host of golden daffodils. Okay, uh, in these four lines, what the poet wants to say? The poet says, whenever he was wandering lonely as a cloud over the hills and hills, he, at once or suddenly he saw a lot of golden daffodil flowers. Okay, okay, where were those daffodil flowers? He said, besides the lake, the daffodil flowers were beside the lake beneath the trees beneath means under the trees and they were fluttering and dancing in the breeze okay so in the first stanza the poet, the poet compares himself uh, with a cloud and he said whenever he was uh, wandering uh, alone uh, just like a cloud over the uh, hills and hills he saw a lot of daffodils and those daffodils were uh, dancing in the breeze okay now let us come to the second stanza yes continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretch it in never-ending line along the margin of a bay ten thousand so I at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance yes in the second stanza, the poet compares the daffodils with the stars in the sky. Yes, you can see uh, the stars twinkles in the sky. 
In the same way, the poet also says that the daffodils are also twinkling here. So, he made a comparison uh, between the stars and the daffodils. Here, uh, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand so I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Here, the speaker notes how the flowers seem to go without ending alongside a bay. The speaker uh, says that actually he saw uh, there may be 10,000 flowers at a time. Okay, He could not count them, but uh, he could guess that he could uh, see 10,000 flowers, daffodil flowers at a time. And all of those flowers, mm, all of the heads of those flowers were moving as if they were dancing. Okay as is they were dancing these are the pictures of the daffodil flower so in the second stanza the poet compares the daffodil flowers with the stars in the sky as the stars twinkle in the sky in the same way the daffodil also twinkles in the sky and uh, at the last of the this second stanza he said him there may be 10000 daffodil flowers he saw at a glance and all of those daffodil flowers were moving their hairs as if they were dancing okay now let us go to the next stanza stanza number 3 the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee a poet could not be but gay in such a chosen company i guessed and guessed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought yes in the stanza the poet says that uh, near the daffodil flowers the waves are glinting on the bay he says near the daffodil there were waves also Okay, uh, but here he also said that the daffodils seem to him more joyful than the waves. Okay, what the poet wants to say? This is the picture of waves. Okay, the poet says that uh, beside the daffodil flowers there were waves. But to the poet, it seems to him that the daffodil flowers were more joyful than the waves. Now, he says that he was extremely overjoyed with the presence of the daffodil. So he said, a poet could not be but gay. Actually, he was overjoyous. Okay. And uh, then he said that I gazed and gazed, but little thought. Then he said he stared, he stared at the daffodil flowers. Okay. But he also says that he stares at them. But he cannot realize the full extent of the positive effects of encountering them. Okay, now let us go to the last stanza. Stanza number four. For oft when on my coach I lie in packet or in fancy boat, the flesh upon that inward eye, which is the place of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils okay now we can see that the poet is in his coach coach means in his in his easy chair or in his bed okay whenever he was lying in his bed uh, either in absent-minded or thoughtful mind okay the memory of the daffodil flowers came to his mind and fills his mind with joy with pleasure okay so what the poet wants to say actually whenever uh, we can see in the picture he is in a very passive mode okay whenever he was very thoughtful when he was he was in his house then the memory of the uh, daffodil flowers came to his mind and fulfills his mind with pleasure and joy and then his mind dances okay actually the poem is about Wordsworth's love for nature the poet finds peace of mind with the company of nature. In the same way, when he was uh, in his house, both in pensive mode or in packant mode, 
the memory of the different flowers offers him great delight. Nature is given uh, life in this poem and spirit okay, in this poem. Here we can see nature as a living spirit and very much sensitive to human feelings. So uh, I think dear viewers you could easily understand the poem. Uh, we will come back with another uh, English uh, poem uh, very soon. Till then, goodbye. Have a nice time.